Hello everybody and welcome once again to Lightning TV brought to you of course in association with mjdphoto.biz. So the second home game of the season at Coventry and last week's visitors were Basingstoke Bison. In fact it was to be a double header weekend as Lightning were due down in Hampshire the following night. Now let's go and check out all of Saturday's action. So Saturday night's visitors to the Sky Dome here in Coventry are Basingstoke Bison. This is how they line up. Number seven, Kurt Reynolds. Number nine, Andrew Medcrano. Number 11, Zach Sullivan. 13, Elliot Dewey. 14 is Cameron Wynn. 15 is Joe Baird. Miroslav Jantreba wears the 18 shirt. 19 is Joe Miller. 23, Tim Burrows. 27 is former Milton Keynes man, Nick Chin. 28 is Doug Shepard. 35, Connor Standing. 44, Tom of Karpoff. Dean Skins wears the number 45 shirt. Danny Inglesby is an insertion at 57. 63 is Aaron Connolly. Joe Rand wears 86. Stuart Mogg is 94. And 97 is Joe Greener. That's the Basingstoke Bison. So your home team, Milne Keynes Lightning this evening. Number one is Jordan Headley. Ben Russell wears a number five shirt. Blaz Emersic wears number eight. Number nine, he's Graham McPherson. Connor Good, of course, wears that number 10 shirt. Number 12 is Yanni Jokola. Jordan County, brilliant weekend last week, of course. He wears number 14. Number 17, Stanislav Lacek wears number 17. 18 is Adam Carr. 19 is Lee Jameson. 21, Ross Green. 23, Tom Carlon. Michael Farm wears 55. 61, of course, is Ross Bowers. Lewis Christie wears 66. 78 is the big man, Lucas Zadapek. And number 93, is Stephen Wall and that's your Milton Keynes Lightning.
Lewis, end of the first period, you're 3 1 down. Uh, what do you say to the guys in the break? Uh, I think we just got a couple of uh, sloppy mistakes. Uh, we made a few too many turnovers out there, a couple of D zone coverage um, mistakes, which is um, inexcusable, really. Uh, there's a few things that we've really got to tighten up on. Uh, but having said that, we are creating some good chances going forward, so it's, it's not the end of the world. There's 40 minutes to go, so you know, we've just got to work through it, make some simple corrections, and, and get going for the next period. Brilliant, Cliff. Thanks very much. Thanks, Chris.
So there you go, a disappointing result for the guys in a night when things just didn't seem to go right. But they, you have to give credit to Bison, who took their chances quite well. Now after the game, I had a chat with General Manager Vito Rouser and also Head Coach Nick Paul. Um, Nick, that was a story of sort of missed opportunities, I think, right away through the game, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, just very sloppy on our behalf. I thought uh, at times with the putt we looked quite good, uh, but just an awful lot of you know costly turnovers, uh, very loose and sloppy defensively, but soft, a um, bit uncharacteristic to be honest, the way certainly the way I want us to play. Uh, so disappointing, really disappointing. Uh, and to be fair, uh, they certainly deserve to win it. But the good thing is we've got uh, a game tomorrow, so we can uh, hopefully uh, put some of it, uh, some of the mistakes right, and, and get back at it. Yeah, certainly the, it's the ideal opportunity, isn't it? The, the, the very next night to, to go out and, uh, and right the wrongs, I guess. It is, it is. Uh, you know, I think there's going to be uh, 18 pretty disappointed guys. Uh, you know, we've let ourselves down, we've let the fans down that have travelled up here. Uh, so it's really important that tomorrow we go out there uh, with a positive frame of mind and, and make some corrections and, and uh, certainly uh, up our game. There were some positives to take to from tonight. I mean, uh, Yanni Jokula showed some signs of absolute brilliance tonight on the ice. And once again, Jordan County, you know, another good game. Yeah, you know, um, you know, there were, were some uh, decent individual uh, efforts, but you know, too few of those. We're, we're a team. Uh, you know, we'll win as a team, we'll lose as a team. So, uh, you know, whilst some players played fairly well, not enough of us did. Um, but the guys know that, and, and I'm really confident that, uh, tomorrow we'll put it right. You pulled um, Stephen Wall, obviously, in the uh, you know, uh, virtually halfway through the game, or, uh, whatever. And uh, what was the reason behind that? Was just send the sign? Was it was it the fact that you know, give Jordan some nice time? Uh, to be honest, we just needed to, you know, sometimes you, you pull a goalie for a reaction sometimes, and uh, we let Wally down tonight. Um, you know, too many chances, you know, one on uh, one on the keeper, and uh, you know, Wally might want a couple of them back, but uh, we were really sloppy defensively, and uh, I thought, you know, putting Jordan in, uh, A, it was a chance for him in a no-pressure situation, and, and B, uh, there was a chance where I still believe we could win the game, and I thought maybe uh, it might give our, our guys a little bit of a, a wake-up call. He certainly stepped up to the play as well, Jordan. A couple of good saves um, early on in the game. Well, he's a good goalie. He's a good goalie, and uh, you know we wouldn't have him on the team if we didn't believe in him. And uh, uh, you know that's what he's there for. He's there to push Wally, and uh, uh, you know he did a good job tonight. So just going back to the guys being disappointed, you can see it as they come through the uh, the tunnel here, back into the changing room. You know, it's written all over their faces. They are disappointed about that result. Yeah, I mean, you know, we felt so good after last weekend, and I think uh, you know going into tonight's game, uh, uh, you know, we had a good uh, well, should say we had a good week of training, we had a good session, um, and and we believe tonight we we're going to put in another good performance. But uh, you know, that sport, um, you know, the guys they worked hard, uh, but uh, we weren't really at the races. I didn't think we were physical enough. Uh, we lost too many of the, the individual battles, and and that showed in the scoreline. Well, Nick, certainly appreciate your honesty and thanks for talking to us. It's uh, time to right the wrongs, I guess, tomorrow. So it's, a, it's a long old trip down to Basingstoke, but it's, uh, it's a tough one. But it's, it's definitely one you can win. Definitely. You know, I'm just, uh, you know, the, the one great thing about uh, the EPL is that, uh, you know, you have a bad game on Saturday night. Uh, you've got a chance on Sunday to, to put things right and, and to feel good again. So that's, uh, that's what we're looking to do tomorrow night. Brilliant, well, Nick. Good luck on the road tomorrow. Disappointing result tonight, but that's, you know, put that behind you and, uh, and off you go. Thanks very much for talking to us. Thank you. Well, all the euphoria of the uh, the first game last week, Vito, and um, that happens tonight. Yeah, it's such a shame, really, because we um, yeah, it was it was fantastic last week. Um, yeah, great turnout and uh, you know, great first weekend. Uh, I think this week it was just a, a bit of a shame because you want your your fat, you want to send your fans home happy, but um, um, kind of felt we were just a tiny, tiny bit flat. Uh, and I guess that you know, the great thing about playing in Coventry is it's such a great facility. The tough thing is sometimes it can be a bit quiet when it's such a, a big rink and it isn't, uh, you know, it's harder to fill. Um, and so you kind of, you notice that a little bit more. And if, if we're not performing, you know, the crowd are a bit quieter as well. So it uh, becomes a, uh, a, a bit more difficult. But to be fair, that's no excuse. You know, we, irrespective of that, we didn't really perform. We didn't really do the things that we should have done. So, you know, c'est la vie. Yeah, it is, it is one of those things, you can't do anything about it, and uh, it's like I said to uh, Nick Paul a little while ago, you've just got to put right the wrongs tomorrow night, haven't you? You've got an ideal opportunity less than 24 hours later. Absolutely, and I, I know the guys will be hurting, yeah, they'll, they'll be, the guys in the change room, you can just see them, yeah, they're just like, you know, really down about it. Um, but, but the great thing is, is like, um, uh, one of the great things about EPL hockey is, you know, you can, you can put things right the next night, not always against the same opposition, but tomorrow night we've got the same opposition in their rink, so um, you know, an opportunity for us to go and do to them what they did to us tonight. One good thing about it, you mentioned the fans earlier on, and uh, once again, they, they got here as many as they could, um, straight out here, uh, even you know, 24 hours before the game actually had to get a bigger bus uh, to get more people here. Yeah, the, I mean, um, 
the, the, the bus situation has been fantastic. Um, Debbie's done an amazing job really with the bus, you know, making sure that uh, you know, that it's always full to the point where she actually oversold the bus, so we had to get a bigger bus or bigger coach um, to, to accommodate uh, some more people that wanted to come up. But no, that, that's been fantastic. Um, you know, uh, the fans can buy tickets on a Wednesday night uh, in Milton Keynes, so that helps as well. So yeah, you know, from, from that side, it's, you know, it's, it's gone as well as we could have hoped. Brilliant. Well, Vito, frustrating night. I know uh, it was written all over the next a bit of frustration. You're frustrated as well. Uh, one thing, one last thing I'm going to mention as well is you, you had a meeting during the week with the, about the on-ice helpers, and that's one thing that's been a major, major success. It's only two games in, but the, the off-ice, you know, off-ice officials and the off-ice helpers have been absolutely fantastic so far this season. Ah, yeah, it's superb. I mean, we had to, uh, we've got some challenges here that are slightly different to um, to what we have in Milton Keynes. So we have, you know, um, ironically, there's, there's, there, are, there are four sets of doors that come in. So you have to have more people manning that. The um, the clock system, um, uh, you know, today we had Sue Watkins helping us out as well, which you know, which, which isn't the first time she'd ever done it, and she was miking up to the uh, to the the clock that's up up at the top. So you know, we we have some challenges that we've not had uh, before in Milton Keynes. But the one thing that we have got is we've got some amazing helpers. We really, really have. And uh, you know, we had a long old meeting on Wednesday night, put some things right, and I think today went a lot smoother. Brilliant. Well, Vito. Right or wrong tomorrow night, hard road trip down to Basingstoke, but thanks very much for talking to us. You're welcome, thank you. Now, once again, many thanks to the guys for giving their time to talk to us, and it's never easy on nights like that. Man, the match on Saturday was a well-deserved Blaz Emesic, who was industrious right throughout those uh, 60 minutes, and a well-deserved man of the match, of course. Now, on Sunday night, Lightning couldn't quite even things up as they lost at Basingstoke 3-2. Netminder Jordan Headley collected the man of the match beers in that game, and that was well-deserved after his performance between the pipes. Now, let's go and have a look at the rest of the weekend's results, and, of course, the league table comes Sunday night. So another full weekend in the English Premier League this last weekend saw just how unpredictable this season could well be. On Saturday night, as well as that lightning Basingstoke state result, Peterborough beat Bracknell 4-3 at Breton. Guildford took the points away from Yorkshire as they beat Steel Dogs 6-2, while Slough endured another tough night as they went down at home to Telford, the score there 6-3. Meanwhile, Manchester kept up their 100% record as they shut Swindon out 4-0 down at the Link Centre. On to Sunday then, and it was another tough night for Lightning as they went down 3-2 at Basingstoke. Bracknell picked up their first points of the season over Slough at the Hive as they beat Jets 5-4, whilst Guildford banged in a hatful of power play goals as they beat Swindon 6-1. Up in Altrincham, Phantoms fans must have wondered what hit them as they were swept aside by Phoenix side on a mission. The home side scoring 11 unanswered goals as they took the victory 11-0. Now that was Phantoms' heaviest defeat in the English Premier League to date. Last of all on Sunday, Sheffield took the points away from Telford as they beat Tigers 5-2. On to the league table then, and it's no surprise to see Manchester at the top with the only 100% league record so far and 12 points. Interesting to note, to note there that they have scored 38 goals now in just six games and have conceded only seven. Next up is Guildford and Basingstoke with Swindon, Sheffield and Milton Keynes close behind them. Bracknell and Slough occupy the bottom two slots. Still a long way to go, but it's certainly going to get interesting in that middle order as the season progresses. So now it's time for your tweets and messages, and you've all said exactly the same thing this last week. Jordan sent us a message on the Milton Keynes Ice Hockey Forums saying it was a disappointing weekend. However, Jordan Headley performed well. No doubt about that, Jordan. Jordan looked very, very good when he came in to replace Stephen Wall halfway through the Basingstoke game on Saturday, of course, and picked up the Man of the Match beers on Sunday night down in Basingstoke as well. There is no doubt that Jordan Headley is ready for the English Premier League. Will O'Brien on Twitter said he's bitterly disappointed for the guys not getting anything from the weekend, but we can't dwell on the past, we need to look forward. Absolutely, Will. The past results are gone, we can't do anything about that now. But one thing I do know is the guys will be 100% focused on this weekend's coming game, starting, of course, with Manchester at home on the Sky, at the Sky Dome on Saturday night. And that was pretty much the same message we got from all of you uh, this week. So thank you very much for getting in contact. Don't forget, you can do that every single week. You can follow us on Twitter. It's at Lightning TV. Send us a message on our Facebook page if you can find that. Or just send us a message on the Milton Keynes Ice Hockey Forums as well. Within the next few weeks, we'll be hoping to give away prizes for the best tweet and message. So keep your eyes peeled. You never know, you may be a winner. 
Travel news now and a reminder to make sure you book your seats as on the buses for the home games in Coventry as soon as you can to avoid any disappointment. You can do that either at the Supporters Club stand on match nights of course or by emailing travel at mklightning.com. That's travel at mklightning.com. Now demand has been so strong for bus seats that last week the team had to organise a larger bus which is testament to the great support for Lightning that's out there and that's down to you guys. Now of course we do have to thank Debbie and the team for all they do in organising buses each week because without them it'd be absolutely impossible. It is down to you guys at the end of the day to fill those seats and come and make some noise up at the Skydome in Coventry. Now, one other thing before we go for this week. November, we'll see the Lightning Annual Golf Day being played at Three Lots Golf Club just outside Milton Keynes. Now, over the last couple of years, the golf days have been really well attended with supporters, sponsors and players all taking part. Now, details of the date and how to enter will be released very, very soon. So make sure you set the date and get your name down for an absolutely great day out. Well, that's it for Lightning TV for this week, of course. Many thanks for joining us, and we hope you've enjoyed the show. Now, don't forget, Saturday's visitors to the Sky Dome are Manchester Phoenix, and that's going to be one good game. Now, doors open at 6.30, face-off is at 7.30, so why not get there early and create some noise for the boys? If you want to get more information on travel or anything else, just go to the Lightning website, of course. It's www.mk-lightning.com. If you want to follow us on Twitter, it's at Lightning TV. It's as simple as that. We'll see you again soon.